The more you become a member of society, the less you become an individual. The more you become a citizen, the less you become a man. This is Trendsetter of the Mind, that's Argos, and this here guest is Wilhelmina. Um, as you can see, I've moved temporarily, but anyway, to get on with the video, um, today we're going to be covering Buster's Mall Heart. To me, this movie embodies what civilization tries to do to people. In the beginning, it starts and ends with the mercenaries of the state, uh, police, military, uh, chasing down the main character. He does not hurt anyone or steal anything, but is simply living in the wild. This amount of freedom is intolerable for a government to allow, so they do their best to put him back into the slave machine from where he came and that many of us live in right now. A lot of us who watch this film can relate to the monotony in so many scenes of him going to a job, working until he is exhausted to support his family, and trying to balance any meager amount of energy left with happiness. Eventually, as most of us have experienced, he kind of stalls out and pauses to wonder, is this it? With everything I've been told about life and taught through culture, is this everything that it amounts to? The realization high point reaches a crescendo when an argument with his girlfriend arises and they're going back and forth, uh, wondering why they can't afford a piece of land. Are they just going to pay rent for the rest of their lives? What is the point of all this? So that their daughter can grow up and be a slave too? Shouldn't they be happy with this life that they have? And he kind of comes to uh, recognize that they need mountains, they need dirt, they need air. Life shouldn't amount to just becoming part of the cycle. Human beings have an innate desire to work together, but it is appalling that we are, co we are coerced into doing so in a negative and harmful fashion, where we develop a need for money and those who control the supply and demand of it, who get us hooked to it through commercial products, celebrity advertisements, and, and unrealistic entertainment, and so on. As a slave, you can have any positive mental outlook that you want, but that doesn't change the state of a terrible life. We have been reduced to nothing more than zombies that cannibalize each other's resources instead of valuing one another as human beings. We sit in cubicle farms or take jobs in factories where we are no different than the cogs and the machines we work on and feel attached to the paychecks and the benefits that we think we can't live without. A few may work hard enough, all the while paying taxes, and some do get a lucky break where they come to love what they do. Uh, so then it becomes a joy to wake up every day. But why do we put up with a system where it cannot be that way for everyone? Why do so many of us have to succumb to repetition in this mass economy where unperceptive faces are prevalent and absent-mindedness is the norm. Like I discussed in the film Annihilation, the weird guy who enlightens the main character doesn't go by a title like a name and merely labels himself as one of the few free men left or the last free man. The reason he is portrayed in a goofy way, uh, just as conspiracy theorists are, according to classic cinema themes, is because he is actually the most sane and is not dead inside. And the inversion that the movie refers to is kind of like waking up, but of course it doesn't translate the same way in real life as they're trying to make it come across to the audience. There is even some debate as to whether this mysterious man even existed, or if it was really uh, just the main character coming to his own senses 
and questioning everything after living like an automaton, a robot, uh, for so long. Then Rami Malek's character starts committing crimes because that is how the system corrupt, corrupts people in order to survive in it and causes an attraction to superficial things and illogical reasoning. That seems normal because everyone else is doing it. One second. A lot busier here in the city. <clears throat> when his wife dies, wife or girlfriend, whatever she is to him, uh, as well as his daughter, it is hard to say if he killed them or not, but either way, they are dead to him because he can no longer live underneath Uncle Sam's boot. In the scene with the old people, uh, I think that's kind of like an analogy um, of them being tied to the cozy life uh, that the city gives you. Uh, and what he is feeding them is reality, uh, what true life is actually made of. When he comes to the fork in the road at the end and he splits, I believe the metaphor here is for, for when you become free and you can go anywhere and do what you like instead of being bound and gagged to one spot by the rulers of the establishment. Finally, when he does not shoot the mind-controlled servants of the state and instead disappears, this is symbolic of him being with other souls who are no longer limited by man-made constraints.